Hey YouTube, how's it going? Uh, hope y'all had a good holiday, Christmas and New Year's. Um, I'm just making this video real quick to show you this hitch that I made for uh, jet sled and snow machine. Um, I think it works pretty good. I just tested it out, took it around the yard a couple times, and uh, it tracks pretty well. And uh, I was going to kind of show you my thought process going through it. Maybe I could help you guys uh, with some ideas on how to make yours. I will say I, I kind of made this with what I had on hand. I didn't really want to go buy a whole bunch of things or spend a whole bunch of money uh, knowing that I'm just going to use it a couple times a year. Um, so hopefully this will give you some ideas of things you can try and uh, I'll kind of explain uh, why I did some of these things and I didn't go a different route like some of the other people on YouTube have gone. But anyway, we'll get to it here in just a second. So I'll start here at my snow machine. This is a 1999 Skidoo Summit 600. Uh, good machine for me, nice and reliable. Never had any real problems with it. Uh, pretty clean for the year. Uh, I like it quite a bit. It does not have reverse and it is not uh, touring in any means. So kind of just like a one guy sled, um, but it runs good. Um, so this is kind of what I've come up with. It is uh, pretty, pretty crude, but pretty straightforward. And I think it works well. Pretty basic. We just have a piece of uh, angle iron bolted through the bumper here. Um, if I would have done it uh, any different, I probably would have put a, a backing plate back here just for support to take some or spread the weight out in this bar a little bit. And so you can see I've just put two bolts in uh, just to hold it on the bumper. And I think that's gonna do what I need it to do. Um, I'll mainly be using this sled for ice fishing and the weight, you know, on a super heavy day, maybe 125 pounds or so of weight. So I think this will handle that plenty fine um i'll kind of show you here uh just took angle iron like i said and took some flat stock and uh just drilled some holes to fit this pin and so i just got that in there and i wanted to keep everything on the looser side just because it didn't need to be tight so i kept it like this um, it adds for a little extra play, maybe a little extra give in some areas. And so, uh, this main joint right here, that'll control our up and down from the sled. And now this second pivot right here is our left and right. And so I just took, uh, same piece of angle iron here, but I just took a chunk and welded two pieces together. There's an L right there and an L right there and drilled holes through and this is just a temporary bolt that I had. So that just goes through and that goes through to that little, uh, you know, that's about a two and a half inch piece of uh, one inch uh, square stock or not square stock, but square tubing. Uh, and so that takes care of from the snow machine. That's any movement this way or any sway you know this way and so those are your main two attributes so I just welded that onto the bracket and then I took that square tubing you know make fun of my welds I'm, I'm not a welder by any means um, I've never been really trained more or less just self-taught that one looks pretty good though I'd say for me but I mean it's just pretty basic and functional. Now this is kind of our next section here. Uh, you know, you might be wondering why I stacked these two pieces of uh, square tubing on top of each other like this. And the real reason is that's just the strongest way I could connect them. Uh, I had both of these pieces 
kind of sitting around doing nothing and so I decided to make him useful more or less and I decided that I would I didn't want it to ha be only you know that long I want it to be away from the sled a little bit uh, just to make it less harsh of an angle but I just figured that this would be the strongest way to connect them I tried to butt them end to end and it just didn't look right and I'd rather it look not as pretty but be more functional um, so that's the only reason why I have it stacked on top of each other like that. And now we'll go to the front of the sled. Um, I do use one of these cargo nets uh, when I haul it behind the sled. I, don't, uh, I think this particular one actually goes on a four-wheeler or some sort, but it works almost perfect for the standard size uh, jet sled. Um, what I did here, as you can see, I got bolts there, just lift this up, and I just bolted this bracket, so a little bit more of the same flat bar, and then kind of same thing I did up front, uh, just welded it there and there, and then I, another one of these, uh, um, pins and have the, uh, uh, you know, just that guard to keep it on there so you don't have to mess with the cotter pin or anything and that just stretches over the end. It'll be easier to show you on this one. That, that's, I think these pins are the way to go because if I want to detach it, I can just do that. That piece will always stay with the unit itself and you can see I just kind of drilled that in. And if I want to put this back in there, it'd be kind of difficult one-handed. I'll try. There we go. So right back in place. Pop that back on. And that's not going to come off while we're on the trail. So I'll just kind of grab this sled and drag it, you know, we can see all this articulation we have now. We can go any which way we want. Um, and then I'll say this way. So say you were to go over to berm and the sled was to roll a little bit. This is kind of why I made everything a little sloppy on the big side is so that this sled, it can go about right there and uh, not flip over. It, that bar stops it. So there's no way for this sled to do a complete barrel roll. And that's one of the main things I didn't like about the design that had the door hinge and bolt uh, welded onto the rack because um, I'm sure you've seen it if you've seen this video. Uh, it, it seemed like a good idea. I, I liked it, but I mainly didn't want to buy the door hinge, in all honesty. is the real reason why I didn't do it initially, but it, it allows... That door hinge sits on a bolt, so it lets it swing 360 degrees. And I just didn't... I didn't like that idea, it, just for the fact that it would let the whole sled barrel roll uh, if you hit a bump really hard. Um, not that I'm going to lose any gear because I have the cover and this elastic cargo net thing, but just for, uh, reassurance, um, I, I feel like this gives it plenty, plenty of play, really. I don't think I'm going to go over anything much worse than that, uh, on the snowmobile itself, pulling gear. So that, that's the main reason why I went this route with the kind of like the more U-joint style versus that door hinge that'll spin 360 degrees. Um, now, I think this design will work just fine. I, I'm sure the door hinge design worked too, but I feel like this would be a little bit cheaper because you'd only have to buy, uh, what, a foot of angle iron, maybe three feet of square tubing, and uh, probably a foot and a half of flat stock. And that's it. That's enough to build all of this. Um, this is 
16th inch wall this is quarter inch um and then this is 16th that's just what i had um so really the only this was all scrap too all stuff from other projects so my really only investment i've got like eight or ten dollars maybe in hardware counting these things uh, i got one more bolt to buy but but i i feel like this is a lot more rigid than uh say for instance that Chappelle uh you know harness that you can buy where i have the material here and it, it, honestly if i went out and bought all the material i'd probably only be you know another 30 bucks tops even with high metal prices right now of course you do need a welder so not everybody has that but i think this will work just fine for what i need it to now if i had to i definitely could make this stronger just simply by using a uh, thicker material you know i got 16th inch but i mean if i had to reinforce this you know i could add some angle supports here and here um i'd recommend you know lock tightening your bolts uh things like that but i feel like this is plenty durable for uh what i'm gonna be using it for you know again lock tight on those down in the sled for sure and uh probably a good coat of paint and i think that this will be around for quite some time uh leave me uh any comments on you know what you think like how how i did and what i could change to make this better um so yeah go ahead and let me know hopefully you liked the video it was kind of fun to build it only took a couple hours and uh i think it'll do well so have a good one everybody and see you out there